Hello everyone, welcome to Untrusted. This is a really cool little game where you literally code your way to victory. And it's totally free by the way, so I'll have a link in the description where you can check it out for yourself. Okay, let's begin by moving my character over to the computer to pick it up. Yes, believe it or not, this strange symbol does actually represent a computer. Okay, good morning Dr. Aval. It wasn't easy, but I've managed to get your computer down to you. This system might be unfamiliar, but the underlying code is still JavaScript, just like we predicted. Now, let's get what we came here for, and then get you out of here. Easy peasy. I've given you as much access to their code as I could, but it's not perfect. The red background indicates lines that are off-limits from editing. The code currently places blocks in a rectangle surrounding you. All you need to do is make a gap. You don't even need to do anything extra. In fact, you should be doing less. Okay, so yeah, it is a game where you literally manipulate code. As you can see here, this stuff in the black is what I can actually change to get to the exit. That's down here. So if you are if you don't have any experience coding and you're staring at this code and it's making your eyes glaze over and you kind of want to run away, um, I understand, but don't worry. Um, I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk you through as, as much as I can. I don't think I'm a great teacher by any means, but I'm going to try to walk you through the code, assuming you don't really know anything about it and just try to get you somewhat comfortable with it. So I'm assuming you're inexperienced in coding. Uh, myself, I personally have a little bit of experience, not much, but I have a little bit of experience in C++, which helps me a lot with this, but it's not exactly the same. This is JavaScript, it's not C++, so it is different. But there's quite a few similarities, certainly. And yeah, even if you have no experience, I feel like you could still have a lot of fun with this game. So I want to encourage you to try it out anyway, even if you don't know what you're doing to begin with. Just, I think if you mess around, you can have a lot of fun with it. It's pretty cool. So I'll try to walk you through it. And apologies in advance for the lack of any background sound. You can see up here there is actually supposed to be music playing, and I could unmute it if I wanted to, but, you know, YouTube, copyright, music, bullshit, blah blah blah. So I just disabled it for my own safety. It's okay, it makes it easier to concentrate on the code, I guess. Okay, so let's dive into the code. Let's look at it. Um, in my journeys through the game, let's look at the menu here. So this is how far I've gotten so far. I've gotten about a third of the way through. And so far, I've noticed that... I think where a lot of my fun, like the fun that I get from it, where that comes from, is not so much just in getting to the end, but it's really in kind of understanding and messing around with the code. And there's so many, so many different ways you can solve so many of these puzzles. And that's the fun of it. You can really get creative. So let's just look at the code and mess around with it. Okay. So here we have two for loops. There's, there's the first loop and there's the second loop. So let's look at what this for loop is actually going to do. So these are kind of the controlling, I don't know what you call it, controlling parameters, I guess, of the loop. So to begin with, here it's declaring the variable y and setting it equal to the value 3. So y now means 3. Okay, this controls when the for loop is going to stop. So the for loop is going to continue so long as y is less than or equal to the value map get height minus 10. So map get height is a function which is going to return the value of whatever the height of the map is and then it's going to subtract 10 from that. So whatever whatever this value is, so long as y is smaller than or equal to this value, then the for loop will continue looping. And then this here at the end, that controls what the for loop does when it's done with one iteration. That is, That means when it's done with one pass through the loop. So what, the, what this is going to do is it's going to execute the code inside of the for loop, and then it's going to go to this. And uh, the y++, that's an increment, it's going to increment y, which means it's just going to add 1 to it. So it's going to go through all of this. It's going to add 1 to y. So y used to be 3, but now it's going to be 4. And then it's going to execute everything again. And it's going to keep going until this condition is no longer true. So because y needs to be less than or equal to this value, and y is always going to be growing at the end of every iteration, that means eventually this for loop is going to stop because y is going to get too big and it's going to be equal to the value. 
of this. So that's how this works. It just loops based on whatever kind of parameters you want to give it. So let's look at what's actually going on inside of here. So what this is going to do, uh, map.place object, once again, this is a function. How, can I even describe a function? I don't know if I can describe a function well. It's a thing that does stuff. You give it things and it does things. <laughs> Brilliant description. You're welcome. But uh, the name is pretty self-explanatory. So within the map, that is this play space here, it's going to place an object. That's the name of the function. So it's going to place something. And these are the parameters of the function. Or I guess, well, rather these are the arguments of the function. These are the, these are the things we're giving to the function to do with. So the function is going to do something based on what we give it. And this is what we're giving it. We're giving it the value five, we're giving it the variable y, and we're giving it block. So what this is doing is it's gonna place an object at the x coordinate five, the y coordinate y, and what it's going to place is going to be a block. So the x coordinate five, um, where is that? That would be, I believe that's here. It's kind of hard to tell. I kind of wish this actually had like a coordinate system on the screen so I could see exactly where that is. But yes, so x5 should be here. And then it's going to start placing it at y. And so this is where a for loop is like super awesome. So this is a literal value. It's just, it's just the value 5. Which means no matter how many times this loop goes through, this is never going to change. It's always going to be 5. The x value is always going to be 5. However, the uh, the y, it's it's not a literal value. It's, it's a variable. It's this variable here. And it's going to change. Which means every time this for loop goes again and again, this 5 is going to be the same, but the y is going to change. The first time this runs through, the y is going to be 3, because that's what we initialized it to. But then, remember, at the end of each iteration, y is going to be incremented. So y is going to become 4 on the next iteration. So now this value is going to be 4, and then it's going to be incremented again. It's going to be 5. So that's how, you're, that's how you iterate through basically the same code, but different things happen each time. So we're always on the x-axis. Uh, we're always on the x-coordinate of 5. However, the y coordinate is going to be growing from three to four to five to six to seven till it reaches whatever whatever limit this sets. I don't know exactly what that would be. Depends on how many, you know, what the actual height of the map is. I'm not sure. So it's starting at five. It's always going to be on five here. It's going to start at three, which I'm assuming is, I guess, right about here. And then I believe it's going to keep going down. So we can test this. So let's just mess around with the code. I'm going to comment out this line which means it's no longer going to execute it. So let's just execute the new code that I've just made and let's see what happens. Let me go pick up my computer again. Okay, yeah. So as you see, obviously the left side is no longer here. So this line here will put on the left side of my, my cell, the left side of the wall, whatever you want to call it. And I'm pretty sure this next line also controls the right side. I believe it does. Let's test that. Yeah, it does. So again, let's look at them. So basically, this is placing a bunch of blocks on the y-axis, all on the x-coordinate 5. So that's going here. This next one is looking at, okay, so the x-coordinate is going to be whatever the width of the level is. So the width of the level going out to here, to the right, and then minus 5, putting it here. So the width of the level, minus 5. So it's the same thing as this line, except instead of going on the left side, we're going from the right side. And yeah, that's what it's doing. And then, of course, this next for loop is doing basically the same thing, but it's uh, putting these two lines on the x-axis. So obviously, I've already come to the solution long ago. I could just go to the exit right now, but let's keep messing around with the code. Because again, I think that's where the fun of it is. is in finding all sorts of different solutions and cool things you can do. Okay, so instead of just wholesale getting rid of these things, 
What if I can shrink them? Or, you know what, what if I actually move them? So I've gotten rid of them entirely. But let's do something different, let's actually move them. So again, this is going to place this whole line of walls here, on the left side. And it's placing them at x-coordinate 5. So what if I just made it x-coordinate 4? That should move everything back to the left, 1. It did not? I am confused. Let's try three. There we go. Pretty cool. But... Let's... Let's actually shrink it. Okay, so... So why is starting at 3? Let's execute this again just to put it back in place. So why is starting at 3 and it's going all the way till whatever this is? So starting at 3, this is apparently 3 and this is whatever. This is, is going to here. So if I shrink these, if I make them closer together, I should be able to actually shrink this line. So let's, instead of starting at 3, let's start at like... 6. And let's subtract more from it. So we're going to do, instead of minus 10, we're going to do minus 15. And that should shrink it. Yeah, and there we go. So you can see there's a bunch of different ways you can approach it. You can try to get rid of it. You can try to delete the whole thing. You can try to delete some of it. You can try to move it. Okay, let's move on to the next level. Well, it looks like they're on to us. The path isn't as clear as I thought it'd be. But no matter. Four clever characters should be enough to erase all their tricks. Okay. I remember when I originally played this, I thought four clever characters could erase all of their tricks. I have no idea what those four clever characters are. I, I really don't have a clue. So I did something else. I'm trying to remember what I actually did. Let's see. Okay, so there's a lot of code here. Uh, I wouldn't worry about trying, trying to understand all of it. But... Let's see if I can remember how I did this. Okay, so let's start with getting rid of this mess of this maze. Let's try to pretty much get rid of it. Okay, so... I can't even pretend to truly understand what the hell's going on here. <clears throat> but... This is the map, right? Variable, called maze, so that is the maze. And the maze is whatever the hell this is. So the variable is actually called maze, and it has two values. It's got a width and a height. So it looks like right now what that's doing, it's creating a maze. This rot map divide maze, I, I guess, is the function that actually creates the maze. And the maze is being made to the size of whatever the width of the entire map is and whatever the height of the entire map is. So in other words, the maze is going to make up the entire map. So, so I've declared the variable, or I guess they've declared the variable here. However, I can change the value of what's inside the variable. It is a variable after all, it can be changed of course. So let's go ahead and change it. So, let's do maze. Wait, shit, how do I do this? <laughs> I think I can just call this again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're going to set maze. I hope I'm actually doing this correctly. Again, I'm not super... I'm not really familiar with JavaScript at all. So basically, this is declaring the variable, and this is just changing the value of the variable. However, instead of setting the width, the entire size of the screen, let's set the width to something really small, like 5. And same with the height. So instead of the entire height of the map being the size of the maze, let's make it also 5. 
So I think what that should do is it's going to declare the variable. That's going to create the maze with the size of the entire map. And then afterwards, right afterwards, I'm going to change those values to something much, much smaller. And as we see right after here, look at this maze.create. So that is a function. The dot create is a function of maze. In other words, even though I'm actually setting the the height and the width of the maze here, I haven't actually I haven't actually created all of the wall pieces you see on the map. That's happening in the dot create here. So if I change the values before it's actually created, then it should create them to the different specifications that I've specified, if that makes any sense. Let's see if this actually works. Maze is undefined. Hmm. Does that work? Do I need var? Maze is undefined. <laughs> Do I need the new again? Do I just copy all of it? Oh, there we go. I guess I needed all of it. Yeah, I don't quite get JavaScript. But uh, anyway, it, it worked. So right before the maze is actually populated with all of the wall pieces, I've just changed it the maze to be super small. So now I've escaped. However, there's still a problem. The exit is surrounded by wall pieces, which are actually not part of the maze, they're actually hard-coded into it. Where is that, actually? Where's the hard-coding? Oh, it's right here. Yeah, place object. So these four blocks here are what are surrounding this exit piece. So, I believe what I did here last time... So I've basically solved half the problem. You know, I've escaped, I've escaped the maze, but now I need to free the exit, basically. So I thought, why don't I just create another exit? So let's just copy this. There's another exit, but of course it's going to be at the same coordinates. So if I can just move it outside of here, then it'll be fine. So right now it's being placed at get width minus 5. So get width minus 6 would put it here. So get width minus 7 should put it right here. And there you go. I've got two exits. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, this is still from when I solved it. Hold on, let me reset it. Yeah, it saves your progress. I was thinking, that seems like I've already solved it. <laughs> okay, there we go. They're really onto us now. The validate level function has been activated to enforce constraints on what you can do. In this case, you're not allowed to remove any blocks. They're doing all they can to keep you here, but you can still outsmart them. Right, so that's what happens as you get further into the game. It starts to put more and more constraints on you. So the super simple stuff I did before, like this is, yeah, I mean, this is basically the same code as the very first level. However, if I try to comment this out, which will remove blocks, it's not going to work. Because there's the validate level function at the end of it, which is checking to make sure if any blocks have been removed. Yep, not enough blocks on the map. Expected 104, found 93. So I can't remove them. Instead, I need to move them. Well, there's many different ways you could do it. Um, out of curiosity... Oh no, I was thinking, you know, instead of actually moving the walls, perhaps I could just once again create another exit, but no, you can't. Because if you look down here... Yeah, map.validate exactly x many objects. So you can see it's validating for one exit block. So if I created two, well, that wouldn't work. So it looks like the best way to go about this is probably just to move the walls instead of removing them. So, that's easy enough, that's something I did back in the first level, so... This is the Y stuff. Let's move it to... Um, oh, no, no, no. That's not right. This is what I need to change. Yeah, so once again, let's put that on, like, 3. This should move it to the left. Yep, there we go. So I didn't remove any blocks. I just moved them. Once again, this is probably solved. Let me just reset it. Out of one cell and into another. They're not giving you very much to work with here, either. Ah, uh, well. Level file, file names can be hints, by the way. Have I mentioned that before? No more cells after this one. I promise. 
Okay, so I can't change anything that's already on in the code. I can only add stuff. Multiplicity, which is, seems to imply I should multiply something. I think how I solved it before is I just made another exit. So yeah, the issue here is that the for loops that actually create the walls can't be changed. So I can't remove the walls, I can't change the walls. Just out of curiosity, this thing here, map place player. I'm guessing you can't call it twice, since I've already been placed up here. But just in case, I wonder if I can. Let's give it a shot. Let's just change it slightly and see what happens. Yeah, I can't place player twice, that's what I figured. So I can't move the walls, I can't move myself, so I guess I have to move the exit to me. So let's do kind of what we did before. Let's copy that and let's move it. Let's move it down. So this is the uh, this is the Y coordinate. So let's make that like ten. I should make it more down. Yep, there we go. Another exit. Okay. Let's reset this one too. Oh my God! It burns my eyes. <laughs> okay. So much for Asimov's laws. They're actually trying to kill you now. Not to be alarmist, but the floor is littered with mines. Rushing for the exit blindly may be unwise. I need you alive, after all. If only there was some way you could track the positions of the mines. Okay, once again. Freaking mess of code. And none of it I can actually change. I can only add stuff. So, let's see. How did I do this? So they've kind of given me new stuff here. You notice the background's a different color. It's all, well, red. Let's see, place object. Yeah, okay, so they've given me something new to work with here. Now you can change the color of a block, a square. Okay, so that's setting everything to red. Now if you look down here to where I can actually place new code, all of this is inside of an if statement. So whatever I place in here is going to be subject to this if statement. So what is this if statement doing? An if statement is basically a way to like control branching in your code. It's it's logic. If this is true or if this is untrue, do this. That sort of thing. So if... Oh god, I... <laughs> I don't know what the hell this means. Well, whatever the hell that mess means. If x is not equal to 2... Or y is not equal to map get height minus... I don't know what that's doing exactly. But anyway, it uh, this whole thing's going to place mines, as we see down here. So I'm not sure what the conditions on this if statement are exactly meant to do. But what what's actually happening within the if statement is the mine placing. And if I look around here, I'm looking for any other mention of mine. So I see a mine in the validate at least x number of objects. But other than that, nothing. So in other words, all the mines that are on this map, which, let's just move around so you can see I will die. Somewhere? I'm gonna die at some... Oh, you've been killed by a hidden mine. There we go. So yeah. There are mines all over the place. So the mines are being generated within this if statement. So whatever I'm gonna place here could control the mines. Because I'm within the code that actually places the mines. So, what I can do is, within this code, change the color of the squares where the mines are placed. So this is going to place mines at wherever X and Y is. So let's just copy this code up here that sets the color of a square. It's going to set it to X and Y, so whatever, whatever X and Y the mine was placed at is also going to be where the color is changed. And then I... I need to set it to some different color. I don't know what the hell you call this kind of color system. F... I... 20? 21? I don't know what that does. Hopefully that's a valid color. Uh, it is, but I can barely see it. Let's try something more extreme. 100? There we go. That's apparently white. So, yes. Whatever the hell this crazy weird logic in this if statement is doing is placing the, uh... The mines. And then right afterwards, I'm setting the square color at the same place the mines were placed. So, now I can just waltz on through.
<laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Drones. Ooh, this is a really difficult one. I think I kind of solved this one basically by accident, not by actually understanding the code. As you can see, it's pretty complicated. Um, I think... Yeah, I think I solved it just by placing this one block, so let me reset it. Looks like that's the only thing I actually put in there, is I just placed a block. Yeah, that's all I did. Okay, so what's actually happening here? If I try to move towards the exit, you see the D is the drone? That's going to kill me. And there's no way to get past it, as you can see. It's always going to follow me. If I try to move to the right... Boom. Absolutely no way to get past it. If I keep wiggling back and forth, it's just going to get closer and closer. Okay. There's got to be a bunch of different ways to solve this, but what I did is I just placed a block right in front of it that it got stuck on for a little bit, and that messed it up long enough for me to get past it and get to the exit. Gotta be honest, it wasn't a very clever solution, and it... It didn't feel very satisfying to do. There's got to be some cooler stuff you can do, but... This is really stretching my... My knowledge of coding, because it just it seems fairly unfamiliar to me. Like, I don't know what the hell is going on here. I really don't understand what this code is exactly doing. It looks very unfamiliar to me. I'm not sure if it's just stuff I've already seen in C++, but in a different form, or if it's something completely different. I don't really know. So, at this point, I kind of just went, eh, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> and I think I'm actually going to leave it here. Yeah, I'd have to spend a lot of time with this to figure out a clever, interesting solution to this. I mean, what I'd like to do is modify its behavior. But you can see, I can't actually modify any of the code that's already here. I can only add new stuff. So this is where the attack drone is created. Type dynamic, so it's dynamic. Its symbol is D, so I guess that's why it looks like a D. It's red. It's red. On collision function player. I'm not exactly sure what that is. So I guess on collision, it triggers the player dot killed by an attack drone thing. Which I guess is why it says, You've been killed by an attack drone. I like to modify its behavior. Because you can see its behavior is to move towards me, player. It'd be fun to change that. Make it move towards just like a random spot on the map or something, but I don't know if I can. Like, I don't know if I can change any of those... any of those settings after it's already been declared. I'm not really sure. But yeah, I think I'll leave it here. So it's a really cool game. Once again, it's totally free. So I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out. And I definitely recommend checking it out, even if you have no experience with coding whatsoever. I think you can still have a lot of fun with it. It's just really neat to see how all of this stuff works. I mean, this is the sort of stuff that's going on behind the scenes in games that you play all the time. You know, this is the sort of code that's being executed. So to actually see it and be able to manipulate it is super cool. So, there you go. That was Untrusted. Thank you for watching.